Hey, what's up? Welcome to Degen Ed. That's degenerative education, meaning none of us is financial advice. Just me having fun looking at charts like the chart behind me, which is of Luminar Technologies, ticker symbol L-A-Z-R, which was requested and it did have a pretty big drop. So I thought I'd follow up on it. Also, there are a number of tickers here on the list on the left that I will be going over that were requested in the comments. And I'm also happy to take requests live during this stream, ticker requests live. Hope you guys have had a wonderful weekend. My weekend is actually just beginning. I've been working the past three days, 12 hour shifts. And so I'm pretty ready for a couple days off. And I'm looking forward to see what happens in the markets tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, I am just going to start the stream by getting into Luminar. And so here, you know, looking at the chart, the thing that stands out to me, and I actually do believe that I had this in the video, it was just uh, not shown on the screen uh, because uh, price had not dipped down to here, but I did have the 1618 extension on the Fibonacci retracement that I showed in the video on Luminar that I believe came out on the 10th, perhaps on the 9th. But, you know, we did see quite a drop breaking below this purple downtrend, going down over 18% on April 11th, and then continuing down on Friday the 12th, being down almost 10% on that day. But it does look like both days we have bounced off of the uh, 1618 extension here from the retracement at a price of $1.27.2, hitting a low on Thursday of $1.23.5, and then the low on Friday was $1.27. So pretty perfectly, you know, nearly perfectly respecting that level. So I'm curious to see if that level does hold. I actually did put out a short on Luminar because, you know, it just struck me that, you know, with this big red move, and I do believe I put the video out on the 10th, I was not expecting this big drop and I was expecting that $1.50 or $1.52 would be acting as support. Uh, but, you know, we, we wicked well below that. And when we actually, you know, when I put out that short, we did have this wick or tail below the candle. And so I was thinking that it might be acting as support. Uh, but the one bad thing about that, I guess, that I had pointed out this $1.50 level, that is now going to be resistance with price trading lower than that. So, you know, I would just keep an eye out for, you know, $1.27. Hopefully we're getting closes above that and ideally getting closes above $1.52 and then reclaiming uh, this level or claiming it, I guess. It's never really... Uh, had to, it's never really claimed it before. It just broke right through it. So hopefully it can claim it as support. It never really has been resistance, but it does seem like it is now with the high on Friday being at a price of $1.48. So, you know, that $1.50 range is going to be pretty key. Do want to be getting above that. And really, you know, if we can reclaim that purple downtrend, that would be coming to a price of like right around $1.70, or maybe that would coincide with getting above uh, the low that was hit here on March 25th at a price of $1.63. So if we can get above that over the course of the next week, I do think that would be really good for the stock. But yeah, those are pretty much my, well, actually, no, I think I, I've got another thought here just thinking about, is do we see bullish divergence or anything? And here, you know, we do see lower lows in the stock price. And right now it does look like, so the low here, was 26.93 the low on friday was 27.67 so you know as long as we don't go lower than 26.93 we are putting in lower lows in the stock price whereas higher lows in the rsi so if we get a bounce on monday tuesday don't go below 27 that would be bullish divergence suggesting that we could see a bounce or a retrace to one of these levels. I do think $1.63 is going to be a key one, especially if we can get above $1.50. So I'd keep an eye out for those levels. Uh, but yeah, and also keep an eye out for the RSI breaking below uh, this low of $26.93. That would then be lower lows. There's no divergence there. Hey, Big Mo, what's up? But yeah, those are my thoughts on Luminar. Hopefully they're helpful. And I'll probably release this as a clip Tomorrow, I've, uh, you know, been kind of, uh, you know, overwhelmed by work the past few days, got the next two days off. So I'm just going to try to catch up releasing some of this as clips. And, you know, so I think Luminar is a good one because of this big drop. 
Uh, but yeah, I'm happy to take requests. Big Mo, if you've got one, happy to go over whatever you want. Uh, but I might go over some more of these stickers and I might do some of them were just kind of like somebody commented on uh, one of the days I put out a number of videos. So I might just do follow ups on those that would be Luminar, Polestar and Velo 3D. And so I might remove Luminar from the list here and I might switch over to. So does my uh, the YouTube take uh, donations? What's I'm just going to type up because I don't see the word after take take a percent of donations. Yeah, actually they do. It kind of sucks. Um, it's 30%, I believe. So that's, that's one thing I learned from doing uh, uh, YouTube and monetizing the channel. Everything uh, that, the, uh, that is monetized on the channel, YouTube takes 30%, which is standard. But it's kind of like a double tax, you know, because it's like, Tax is basically 30%. YouTube does that. But, you know, I, I couldn't be doing any of this without it. So I don't know if there's a, a better way to take donations if you guys want to do them. I had wanted to suggest that earlier, but um, I didn't know if there's a better way to do that. But, but yeah, I mean, I feel like the best way that you can contribute to the channel is really... I do have Venmo, so I, I was wondering if that's like... Is that is that a legit thing? Because you guys definitely do not have to donate or anything you know i'm just doing this to to get the views up and and uh yeah and the channel is now fully monetized so i am making money on ads basically like if a video gets a hundred views i make about a dollar from that video so it's not really that crazy hey big bird what's up yeah i i thought you might show up and request by or uh so they their float likely increasing from 164 million to 300 million when we have the vote in June, feeling a little fed up with this management. Any thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's pretty... I feel like it's not uncommon for stocks trading at such low prices. I'll pull up Biora right now. Um, so let's see. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, the, the reason why they're probably doing that is just to remain compliant with let's see this is the nasdaq uh because yeah they've been trading under a dollar for a while and yeah their recent uh amount of time up here was pretty short-lived above a dollar uh, i believe they closed the month didn't they yeah they closed march above a dollar so i think that's good but now trading lower what's my venmo should I, like, I'm wondering, should I create one for the channel? Or, I like, yeah, I don't know how to do that. I'm looking up on my phone what my handle is. Let's see. Yeah, so. And you guys do not have to do this, but if you want to, that's just my first, middle, initials, and my last name. And so... It should be, I'll hold, I'll hold my, yeah, so this is me, well, actually, oh, crap, one second, I was trying to do one that's, like, visually, this is me, so, that should, if you see that, that's me. But yeah, definitely not necessary. But yeah, Venmo, like, I mean, maybe I should put that in my videos. That if, if people do want to donate, that's, that's a more direct way. I wonder, I wonder if YouTube would get mad at me for doing that. But <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so diving into the Biora chart here. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I had an order placed. Uh, basically, uh, let's see. Um, what was the low here on April 1st when it dropped to the low of that day, it was 67 cents. And so I basically, you know, following that day, like, let's see, the close was 73.53. I'm not sure what I, I placed an order and then, you know, the price kept going up. And so I was like, fine, you know, I'll just have my order filled at like 75 cents or something like that. And then sure enough, you know, like the day after price goes down, could have gotten cheaper shares. But, you know, I don't, I don't buy too aggressively. So I was just like letting it 
uh, you know, see what happens. I'll add more later. And then because it had this low of 67 cents, I was just like, okay, cool. And then I'll just place an order at 67 cents, wait for it to get filled. And yeah, it got filled on Friday because there was the low of 66.10. And yeah, I mean, I feel like this is just like, regardless of whether it's like, a, I, I imagine that's by increasing the float, is that effectively a reverse split? Because they're just more, more shares. So you'd own, yeah, that's effectively like a one to two or so reverse split. Um, and so with that, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I just, I feel like this is part of the process and just like for the time being, I'm not being like super aggressive. Like, but I should say when, it, when price was trading over here, I was not aggressive enough. And I should have been, especially when like I saw it break out here and test that before going up, I should have been a lot more aggressive here. Now it's probably, I mean, let's see, let's look at this. You know, so this was like bleeding, let's say just like from the beginning of that downtrend to like right before it broke out. That was over the course of a little over a month. And so, but yeah, I mean, that included like all of this bleeding. So let's see, I mean, this could be like, it's probably like, it's like three months basically, a little over three months. So I feel like we could see prices going sideways for what, how long would it be to get to that yellow line? That's um, 129 days. So I think it's a little extreme. Yeah, so Big Bird's saying CEO uh, of Biora keeps acting like everything is great and partnerships are around the corner, but nothing ever comes. Been as loyal as anyone the past two, past two years. They also never interact with shareholders. Yeah, I haven't been too engaged with them until there was like the uh, n news about the um, the approval for uh, trials and stuff, and that got me really excited. There's a big move, you know, in the after hours and stuff, and you know, seeing this move here. I feel like it's just inevitable. And, you know, looking at this big move, I, my average, I think right now is around 160. Um, but, you know, I could have trimmed here and taken not necessarily profit, but just trimmed a little bit to then buy back lower if in case that did happen. And, you know, I didn't do it. It wouldn't have been many shares because I do sell covered calls. So uh, usually at strikes, probably like two, two, $2 or two, $2.50. And, you know, if those get filled, I make money. If they don't get filled, if they don't close in the money, then I'm still holding the shares and that's fine. And so I just feel like, I mean, for me, I'm I'm excited about the news of partnerships. I, I wonder if like Pfizer could be one of them. I think that would be pretty huge news. And um, yeah, and they've got like the clinical trials going on now that I feel like are going well. It seemed like they're going well. And yeah, I don't know. I'm just intrigued by the technology. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like now is a time like to either add a little bit here and there while it's low. Uh, but, you know, also, I mean, it could be going down to 50 cents. I feel like 50 cents is, you know, a psychological level for this. Um, so I, I definitely think price could be going down there. But like, I just wouldn't be too aggressive with additions and... You know, just try to, you know, it might be a few months down here and maybe there'd be a big rally. But then, you know, the thing that sucks about this rally is, you know, price goes up a bunch. I was expecting it to be holding here. Like this was like the lows behind us. Now we're making new lower lows. So, I mean, if it does shoot up and then you get in the money or your average is lower than whatever the price is, it might be a good idea to trim some, you know, and then if it does dip again, you can buy it back. Or if it doesn't, you still got some to hold on to. And so like I, for me, I just plan on holding this, you know, for the year, unless my covered calls close in the money. But I have enough shares. I'm not too worried about that. And I kind of like stagger my covered calls. Uh, so I, I think they're, they're always monthly. So we can actually look at this. 
usually like their options chain kind of sucks because it's monthly and since it's below a dollar um let's see this is puts so i want to look at calls um yeah like to sell a covered call it's you get nothing for it and it's in five cent increments so that'd be like five dollars per covered call and so i just place orders like limit orders if the covered call with a strike of 250 goes to five dollars I sell uh, or loan out, you know, 100 shares as a covered call, and then I just get a little bit of money for those. And so with April 19th coming up this Friday, these are all probably going to be zero, but May 19th is the next one. It's quite possible $2 could go up to $0.05, cents, which would be $5 per covered call per contract. Um, or then there's also July. I've sold one uh, for July with a strike of 250 and I might have been... Uh, for ten dollars or ten cents at the time, so that's definitely something to consider if you do have a lot of shares. Whatever your average is, just look for uh, calls, call options, and then sell. You know, uh, covered calls. So that's just like going here, and I don't have my account logged in here, so I don't know if I can do anything with this. But yeah, you basically just go to this to um, sell sell a covered call and you just place a limit order for five cents, you get $5 for that. And then if it closes on July 19th above 250, you have to sell your shares for $2 and 50 cents. If it's below, you get your shares back and you can do the same thing again. And so I've just been doing that for like the past at least year with Biora. And so it's been a nice way to make a little bit of money. And so, yeah, uh, Big Bird saying tech is amazing. I definitely agree with that. But I'm seriously questioning the management. Still holding, but not happy. Yeah, no, no problem. I mean, it's one that I'm like, when I put out videos, it's like if it's really volatile, like over here, they'll get views. But like if it's just like this, if I put out a video on it, nobody's gonna watch it, or like ten people will watch it. And for like the amount of time it takes to like make the video and edit it, it's not really worth it. Just as far as like, you know, because like pretty much. Uh, for like a hundred, you, you can see like the number of views. I believe you guys can see the number of views the videos get that I put out. And it's basically like for every hundred views, I make like a dollar. So I'm, I'm not making much money from doing this, but you know, that's slowly growing over time. And like a Biora video, I, I think I'd struggle to get a hundred views on it. So I'm trying to focus on the ones that get a hundred views. But yeah, I mean, easy, easy to dollar cost average in. And I, like, that's what I'm doing. You know, unless it closes like monthly uh, options uh, date above 250. I'm not selling my shares unless maybe we get a big run up and then any of the um, uh, shares that I have that I'm I haven't sold as covered calls. I might trim, but this this to me is like one to hold for the year and see what happens the end of 2024, beginning of 2025. Uh, but this could be like yeah, I mean look at a questive just went up a bunch. I had covered that. Um, and yeah, I mean, and then like, yeah, I mean like biopharmaceutical stocks, especially like ones that have this like novel technology behind them, they could go pretty crazy. And so I feel like that could be happening with this one by the end of the year, maybe next year. So I'm just trying to hang out, be patient. I'm not like in the position where like I need any of the money back that I've invested in. I was previously, but now it's just like, I'm just hanging out. So I'm not worried about it. I'm just not really adding too aggressively. Uh, but yeah, that's Biora. And so I think I might go on to, yeah, I'll, I'll, Big Mo, I will look at uh, Polestar next. Thoughts on holding it long term. So this is one that like, so I've covered like a number of EV stocks. And, you know, I feel like the ones that I end up holding do bad. The ones I end up trimming do poorly. And so this is one that I decided was just like, I, I feel like I have too much exposure to the EV space. Um, really, I feel like with NEO and then also with the bad news of Fisker, I decided to sell my very small canoe position, ticker symbol GOEV, uh, and hold on to Fisker. And, you know, I had accumulated a good amount of Fisker. That's, of course, basically zero now. And GOEV went on a big run. Uh, with Polestar, I just I didn't have very many shares, and it's just like I I can't be spread so thin. And so what I see with this, 
Thoughts, well, thoughts on holding it long term. I feel like really just like the EV stocks, like the market, I feel like it's pretty saturated as far as how difficult it is for EV companies to succeed. And like Elon Musk has like gone over that pretty extensively. And, you know, so the EV stocks that like stand out to me as being like as having an edge, um, I would say Rivian because of their backing, because they're backed by Amazon. They have deals with Amazon as far as delivery vehicles. Um, also, I mean, I, I've heard criticism of their um, the grill or whatever, the front of those trucks being ugly, looking like Pokemon. Uh, but I think it's actually a pretty attractive vehicle. And it's also kind of like a luxury truck. It's got a lot of really nice features. And I also, I feel like just like the shape of the body and stuff, it's more of a conventional pickup and like versus like a cyber truck or, uh, yeah, I mean, so I'm, I'm intrigued by Rivian. I don't currently have any shares because the stop loss got filled. And so I don't have that. Um, Polestar intrigues me because it's European. And so I'm not familiar with any other European EV companies. And so I feel like they have an edge in that sense. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, so like I'm intrigued by them and, and, and so I guess, yeah, I mean, I would say that's probably the biggest selling point for me that they're European and I mean, their vehicles look beautiful. Uh, but I imagine probably on the much pricier end, but that's, that's how EVs tend to be or really any new technology tends to be initially. Um, and so, yeah, let's see. I mean, and, and just like looking at the chart, this to me, it looks like this is, you know, you have this big move up, but then it's followed by this down move. So you couldn't get any consolidation up here. That would be like a bull flag. Instead, you got a pullback and now you're seeing consolidation here. And I haven't adjusted these levels from like the last video or last time I covered Polestar. And it does look like, you know, yeah, actually from the last video that I put out, I had pointed out uh, bounces, you know, on these two levels. And not only did it close below this level, got two closes, a weekly close below it. But the real key here is going to be a close below a dollar forty three, because right now, as far as my understanding of confirmation goes, this is not a confirming close below this uh, line of like 148 or 149. A confirmation would be if you got a close below this day's low, Thursday's low of 143. Uh, and also, you know, this inverted hammer candle, that is, uh, you know, in a reversal signal or potential reversal signal. This could, of course, can still continue down. Uh, but when you do see any, you know, hammer of any uh, orientation, uh, inverted or not, top or bottom of the chart. If you do see it at the base of a downtrend, uh, inverted or regular hammer, that could suggest a reversal. So I'd look for a close tomorrow above 149, but generally this looks pretty weak to me. And and so for me, I didn't have a big position. I, I probably had like fewer than five shares, just kind of like I make a video on it. Oh, if it hits this level, I'll buy a share and then I'll reevaluate. And then after that gets filled, I don't have enough money to buy more, not enough money on the side, I should say. And so I just hang out next week, add another. And then it's just like, well, this isn't worth it. And yeah, I mean, here you see the down move, consolidation, down move. And yeah, I think I covered this in last week's video down move consolidation. And now we're showing weakness here. Possible it's a fake out, but yeah, I mean, I, I mean, really, I think when it comes down to it, especially with it looking like the S and P 500 topping stock market topping, or at least, you know, having pretty big pullbacks, maybe we're starting to enter a bear market and maybe like six months from now we will officially enter the bear market, but we'll look back and be like, Oh yeah, the stocks have been bleeding for a while. And so I feel like now's kind of a time to like, I mean, uh, for me at least, do I want to be holding these companies, all these stocks long term, 
or you know to be holding them to be invested in them or am i trying to be swinging you know uh stocks making money so my goal especially with this channel uh is to be you know getting better at technical analysis executing trades and taking profits so you know my goal is not to be holding stocks but to be making money like i think of it as like am i in the money business or the stock holding business and so this one to me at least i didn't have a big enough position so it was easy to exit um and i think i i didn't take a loss or anything uh but yeah this one seems to me like it could be and especially you know like being just above a dollar having hit a dollar 30 over here you know if i was a short seller i'd want to drive the price to below one dollar this is listed on the nasdaq you know they need to hold the price above a dollar and so i could definitely see uh you know this being driven lower especially if the market conditions start to change if we start to see you know credit card debt ramping up uh and you know delinquent payments people aren't going to be buying things like fancy electric vehicles or you know i covered lululemon uh, and so i think that people are going to be a little more conservative with their spending and uh yeah a lot of these emerging companies might suffer from that so i'd caution but yeah i mean with the chart Reclaiming a dollar forty nine would be good, but still, you know, it's not really that much. And you know, like volume's been, like, yeah, like as this, like this red candle here. So on Thursday, down eight percent on the day. It's not a lot of volume, but volume went up uh, when the price was going down there. And so, you know, price is now staying at that level. At volumes calmed down. So I would just think that. This doesn't seem to be looking that great. And so I think it could be revisiting 130 if not going to $1 a share. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and and if, like, if one has a large position of this, it might be good to just, like, tune it out and um, maybe wait and see if it hits $1.30 and then reevaluate. If it doesn't, you're not going to get your average down much uh, by, you know, averaging in. And I feel like really that's just exposing more risks. Like when I, whenever I have big positions, I try to really slow down my buys just cause it doesn't really affect my average. And it's just, you know, making the bag a little bit bigger, but yeah. And so after that, I will go on to Velo 3d. This is one that I'm actually really excited about. Uh, so I covered Velo 3d ticker symbol VLD back here. I think somebody requested it and um you know basically what i saw was this level right around 32 cents being respected and thinking that that was like a breakout because we had these wicks over here this was acting as resistance and so really just getting like a break above not only this downtrend that i have drawn here uh, but also that blue line at 32 cents so i was thinking you know you're breaking out of that there's probably going to be a retest before a bounce I was expecting it to come down to around 30 cents, really test that downtrend before going up. And I had an order placed at 32 cents, did not get filled, even though on this day, March 13th, the lowest 32 cents, my order wasn't filled. Anyways, I didn't chase, ran up to 60 cents, which is what I thought might be the top corresponding with this, you know, gap fill over here. Shortly after that, really the day after that, dropped down to guess what price? 32 cents was the low on March 27th. I had my order placed there, wasn't filled again, missed out on another run up to 60 cents. But then, you know, we see this drop here, uh, and uh, let's see, the low on April 10th was 26.48 cents. I did not have an order placed there because I thought after this miss, the second miss, I had missed it completely, and there is not going to be another chance to uh, swing it up to 60 cents or, you know, hold it for long term. I think the company is really interesting. It's not just a 3D printing company. It's a 3D metals printing company. And so they have collaborations with, um, I believe, SpaceX and uh, other rocket companies. I'm pretty sure I saw uh, Ad Astra on there. Or is it just Astra? Um, and... Uh, 
Uh, yeah, lots of industry, stuff like that. So I just think it's a really compelling company. Anyways, since uh, we did break below 32 cents, I did get a comment to check this out. I looked at the chart and I was thinking, well, you know, maybe it's come down to that white downtrend that I had my eyes on before. I'm going to see what the close is before I do anything. And so on, let's see, was this Wednesday, I guess? Uh, April 10th, it closed at a price of 28.39 cents, which if you can see that was just below that white downtrend. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm not drawing these lines perfectly. They're really just guides. That seems like, you know, it's more or less respecting this level. And so I had placed an order for 28 cents in the after hours. And it's like, well, whatever, screw it. I'll just do it at uh, 2839. Just got 100 shares, so nothing crazy, a pretty small position. But I'm just thinking, well, you know, uh, my understanding of what the company did is they uh, sold, um, I forget how many shares, but to make a profit of $12 million, and those shares had a price of 35 cents. And so that's why it dropped from up here, because the close on the 9th was at a price of 46.46 cents. And so then people are like, oh, well, they're selling it for lower than the listed price. And people dump it. They panic. Price goes lower than 35 cents. Nobody knows what's going on. Why is it dropping below 35 cents? That is an overreaction. And so my interpretation is that 35 cents is, you know, as the company sees it, the fair value for it. I'll get some shares at 28.39. No problem. If it goes lower, it's a small position. I can add to it. If it goes higher, that's great. And so what I did is I actually sold a covered call with a strike of 50 cents, which would be coming back up to here. And let's see, uh, we can look at the options chain. And so, yeah, my covered call expires this Friday, I believe. Strike of 50 cents. Currently, uh, you know, you can't sell a covered call because uh, they're not going for any money right now. Uh, but that's because the price is well below 50 cents. And so basically, I just made like $5 buying about $29 worth of this stock. And then, you know, I'll probably do the same thing for the following month. So let's see, May uh, 17th is the next uh, options contract. So right now, 50 cents, zero for that month. But I can just place a limit order and maybe that gets filled and I get $5 back. And, you know, I'm still holding 100 shares. If it closes above 50 cents, I make profit. So not a big deal. Um, and so, yeah, that's really kind of my strategy with Velo 3 d if it goes below my current price, my average price of $28.39, I'll, I'll add more. That's easy, as long as it looks like it's respecting support. But, you know, at this point, that next level of support is probably going to be down here around $25.50, uh, basically where you see the uh, consolidation here. That might be acting as support again. But since that has acted as support in the past, actually got a good amount of history of it acting as support here. Um, it might break, and that's actually closer to 25 cents. 25.15 is where that line is now. And so, yeah, I mean, if price does go down to that and it looks like it's respecting it, maybe I'd pick up some more shares, get my average down. Uh, but I could see it retesting 18 or 19 cents. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, I just think the company is really interesting. Uh, but yeah, I wonder how, if we do go into a recession, how that might affect it. I think that would not be so great for it. Uh, but, you know... Uh, yeah, so I don't know, but I'm, I'm just intrigued by the company and it's cheap enough for me to not, not sweat it, you know, if it does go down. I don't have, I didn't throw tons of money on it. You know, I'd rather make like $5 on a trade than uh, hope to make $1,000 and get, you know, caught up in it. Like I don't, I don't care about uh, what happens with it because I don't have so much money in it. But I do think just looking at the chart and with, you know, the news on the 9th, 35 cents seems like it's fair value to me. And that seems like what the company thinks as well. But anyways, those are my thoughts on Velo 3D. So I'm going to remove this and then I'll go over some of the other ones that are new to me that were requested in the comments of other videos. And so I think a couple of them, um, let's see, I'll, I'll go through the ones and go over the ones that seem relevant to like kind of cover together. So this one, it looks like it's cybersecurity and it's Israel. So I wonder, is in an Israeli company, I guess. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I guess it's an Israeli company. Yeah, Israeli based. Um, 
so yeah, I wonder, you know, with what's going on right now, I wonder if if that would make this a good play. Uh, so I'll look into the chart, see what I think uh, with that one. But I also, I might do a couple of these petroleum ones because there's uh, Imperial Petroleum or pe Petrol, uh, ticker symbol IMPP, as well as, uh, let's see, Trio Petroleum Corporation, ticker symbol TPET. Uh, and then what are these other ones? Supercom is, I don't believe this is petroleum related. And this technology is not petroleum. Energy, nine energy. This is energy. So maybe I'll do this one after I do the petroleum ones. But first I'll start with Imperial, uh, Imperial Petrol, ticker symbol IMPP, which closed on Friday. April 12th at a price of $3.60 being down 4% on the day and actually putting in a bearish engulfing candle. And it does look like, you know, we got these two big wicks up here. That suggests to me topping signals. Uh, number one, you got this, you know, big green move here. So that was on April 5th going up over 12% on the day. The next day looks like it opened higher, wicked up during the day, hitting a high of, let's see, $4.06, really like $4 being a psychological level. Not only is it a whole number, it's also a round number and an even number. So those are the ones you got to watch out for. And um, yeah, and then also, let's see, uh, $4.08 hit on Friday. So yeah, I mean, we couldn't get like, well, it is nice. Actually, no, I mean, that's a bearish. That's the open. So like the highest open that we got was on Thursday, uh, but that couldn't even... Yeah, I mean, I think that this is putting in topping signals. Oddly enough, though, I would think that petroleum would do good, you know, considering conflicts that have, you know, happened over the weekend. I would think that would make oil commodities whatnot go up. And so maybe this is a fake out, but I just see, oh, yeah, we can also look at, yeah, very clear here. I don't need to zoom out. This is all I need as long as Ed's head's not in the way. Um, I'll just draw these lines, see if you guys can identify it. So I'm just going to go from the high here to the high here. It's just approximate. And then looking at the RSI, you know, doesn't matter. Like I could do the high here or, I mean, here, look, yeah. I think this is even a nice example. So, all right, here in the stock price, you have higher highs in the stock price. In the RSI, you have lower highs. What did you see after that? You saw a pullback. Let's see how much of a pullback that was. That was like a 20% drop from there. Okay. And so let's just think about, let's say 20% drop is the standard whenever we see bearish divergence, because that's what that is. Higher highs in the price, lower highs in the RSI. Then if we look over here, oh, hey, we got higher highs in the price again. Let's look at the RSI. Oh, we actually have lower highs again. So let's assume that we're going to have another 20% move to the downside. Let's see where that would take us. All right, so that would be down to a price of like $3.26 from current price. That would be down about 10%. So really like on Friday, came down about 4%, but that also uh, you know, didn't open at the high here. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that this looks bearish. I think that this looks like good to be cautious of it. Not only you have these topping signals up here, which is like even clearer than any topping signal that you see over here. Really, the topping signal that you saw over here was really just the bearish divergence. Uh, the topping signal that you see over here, A, bearish divergence. B, uh, two wicks, two big wicks up here. Not necessarily topping tails um, unless... Yeah, not topping tails because this is not like all-time highs or anything. I think that is a factor uh, for a topping tail. But considering this previous high, you know, that is a new high relative to it. And you did close in like the bottom quarter, definitely, of that candle of both of these trading days, closing in the bottom quarter. And so that does suggest a lot of weakness there. And you do have this bearish engulfing candle from that day. Uh, Friday engulfing Thursday. So I'd say this looks bearish. I would wait for a pullback to $3.26 and reevaluate. But, you know, if it is coming back to that level, you know, let's see. I'm going to throw up the Fibonacci retracement here going from the, let's see, the low here. 
right around 278, just approximate going up to the high here. And you know, I just I did this from the last video that I did on cannabis stocks, the golden pocket, which is the uh, uh, just a range between the 618 and the 65 percent uh, retracement levels from the Fibonacci here. And so that's just like I think statistically that's a pretty common level for a price to be returning to. And based on you know the little like uh, back of the envelope math that I did to get this pullback, which is really just another 20% down move following bearish divergence, that would be returning price to the golden pocket. If that doesn't hold, the 786 is right around $3, actually at $3.06. I'd say $3 because this is not, I didn't draw these uh, lines precisely from the high and low. And with that level, there is a good amount of consolidation there. I'm just going to throw up the volume profile. Yeah, look at that. Pretty neat how uh, all of this consolidation here and then just translating that consolidation to the volume profile corresponds beautifully with that 786. So I could see price going down another 10%, if not 15%, maybe finding support around $3 a share if it does not hold support at right around 326. And so I guess I'll just point out, yeah, these are approximate levels, so I'm not gonna list them there. But yeah, I'd, I'd say that looks bearish, so I'd be careful uh, with imp. And now I will do, uh, let's see, looking at uh, trio. I, I, got, I say uh, too much. If I do a clip of this, oh yeah, and Mikiko, I will add BitF and CGC. I'll add both of those. I did just do a video on cannabis though, so I'd, I'd encourage you to check that out, but I'll do a brief overview of it here. Um, and I'm just going to try to, I'll come back to those, but I'm first going to finish uh, uh, the uh, Trio Petroleum. So I'm just going to remove this volume profile. And see, so, yeah, looking at Trio Petroleum here, ticker symbol PTET, uh, closed on Friday at a price of 51.6 cents, being up over 120%, 123% on the day. Big wick up here. This is the daily candles, believe it or not. It is looking like RSI is above 70. So in the overbought territory, being at an RSI of 84.61, did get this big wick up here. What is some significant? What are some significant levels that it might be bumping into here? Uh, we see at the bottom over here. Just you know, approximate there. Where did we close at? You know, right at that level exactly. And so. Yeah, I mean, I think it's bumping into resistance. That is at a price of, you know, basically exactly what the close was. So I'd look for closes above like basically 52 cents. If we close below 52 cents tomorrow, I think that suggests some weakness. Also, there's this big wick here going up to 69.39 cents. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I would not be, um, I feel like at this point, it's it's the, the risk is greater than the reward. Possible though, you know, you could see a pullback uh, and then maybe another rally higher. Uh, but, you know, with it being a penny stock, I think it's pretty risky. Uh, but, you know, maybe the next move up could be the lows over here. That would be around 75 cents. Um, and that does, you know, that was resistance over here approximately with that wick high being at a price of, let's see, uh, 74 cents. And so... Yeah, I mean, maybe there's some room for it to go up higher, but I do think this one's looking pretty risky, especially, you know, if it is at all related to uh, Imperial. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm, if it's Imperial or, M yeah, whatever, IMPP. Um, with that one looking so bearish, I would be reluctant to uh, be throwing money in petroleum right now. But, yeah, I don't know. This, this one looks a little risky. And yeah, that was a request from the comments. So hopefully what I went over was helpful, uh, but I am going to now skip to, I'll do uh, BITF. I assume this is related to uh, uh, Bitcoin. Let's see. I don't know if you guys noticed this, I just went over it with IMPP. We got highs here, higher high in the price. And here, I guess it's you know, not exact, but even if I do it from this one, it's still lower high. 
And there's a little bit of a slant there that's corresponding with that peak right here. And so that's bearish divergence, following that bearish divergence. So, you know, I'm, that's not really too interesting what I'm talking about. Hey, look, there's bearish divergence. I think it's going to go down. Price is down already. Uh, and so from that high, price went down, let's see, over 50%. This is pretty rough. Um, let's see. I might do a Fibonacci retracement from here, see what pops up. Just going from the low there up to the high here. Did look like it was holding that um, golden pocket level right there, the 618 above that. I could, you know, adjust this down, maybe go into the low here. Well, let's see. This is kind of interesting. Uh, so if I do it like that, yeah, it's kind of like the ultimate low there to that ultimate high. Um, yeah, getting this 618. So that's like, um, let's see, $1.62. If I move this back over to here, $1.65, I think price is going to around $1.60. What are some levels that might act as support around there though? Yeah, I mean, you got these, got these bottoms here, or I guess bottom, a little bit of consolidation there. And so that's gonna be right around $1.67. You know, maybe go a little bit lower. Um, yeah, and that did act as like a little bit of support here, even though it didn't last long. But that does coincide with the 786. And then if I do adjust this, I feel like if I do it from the bottom here, it's probably a little more useful. It's actually a little bit. There, yeah, right around there, that should be the bottom there. Um, yeah, I, I feel like going down to 160 seems feasible, but I just don't see too much support there. You got all this support here around the 786. So I could see price going down to like 120. But, you know, actually though, you know, with the RSI being right around 30, it's at 30.77. I mean, yeah, but actually to be honest, when's the last time? I mean, here, consolidated before going up. Um, yeah. I mean, all this consolidation here, I could see price coming down to the 786. So I'd say, um, I think it's going lower, definitely, either to $1.60, and if that doesn't hold, $1.20, $1.15, and I would think that would hold. So, I mean, if this is one that, like, you're curious about, like, if I was curious about this one, I don't, I guess I do follow it, you can see up here. Um, you know, for me, I... I'm not anxious to add anything right now. And so I would probably just, well, I mean, if it hits, you know, $1.20, I'd consider adding there. But otherwise, I'd probably just ignore it because maybe it dips here and then starts going higher, chasing, a lot of risk, and you got this volume shelf here. So, see, I think that's an interesting one, but, um, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. And then I will do... Uh, CGC, I'm just going to go over this really quick because I did go over it in the video I put out yesterday. And so looking at this, yeah, I mean, I, I think that this is, I mean, because this went up 320%. I feel like this is going to cool down, cool off, at least come to $7 a share. It's pretty crazy that it's still up so high. Um and let's see here. There's no, no divergence there or anything. Hmm. I'm curious about these little peaks here. You know, is it possible I drew this in a different video? No. But yeah, I mean that's that's like a little rough a rough line there, but just connecting those peaks, maybe maybe price does return to these levels right around there, and then that acts as support for next move up. Yeah, Ardashane, I will definitely look at Lululemon. But yeah, I mean at CGC, 
I, th- I feel like generally, I think that there's been a pullback in the cannabis sector. I think it needs to cool off a little bit. And then I think it will continue higher. Uh, but I think that this one, I mean, I, I think that this one could continue going down. It went down 4, 4.29% on Friday. It's not crazy, but yeah, I mean, at least coming down to like 750 bottoms of these candles over here. So I, I yeah, long term though, I think cannabis will probably be good. I'm, I'm encouraged by it. And so I will add Lululemon. And yeah, did this drop recently? I haven't been paying attention to it, but I did. Yeah, okay, so I think I probably put out the video with it around, yeah, like last week, for sure. I put out the video um, based on last week's stream. I think it was just a clip. I was just intrigued by it. I actually don't think it got very many views, so it was kind of a discouraging video because I thought like, oh, Lululemon, this is like a popular one. Uh, but didn't get that many views, maybe because it's over you know hundred dollars a share. Um, but yeah, so last week, last let's see, uh, this is Wednesday. So so yeah, this was the first trading day. I had kind of suggested. I think I compared it to Twilio and how that came down to the six one eight. And I thought you know I was contemplating, is it going to hold support there or go lower? Then it consolidated over a few days, formed another bear flag, just like it formed over here, bear flag, and then a break lower, or really like a fade lower and then a break, Friday being down almost 4% on the day. And so I could see that coming down. I mean, you got this gap here. Maybe I should mark that on here. Let's see. I'll just put a horizontal blue line. I like my gaps to be blue. So what's the high on this day on March 28th? The high was 32125. So I'm just going to adjust that here. All right. So that's the gap that has not yet been filled. And we are above that. And the 786 is also below us. And so my thoughts are that maybe we throw up the volume profile and it gives us some more guidance. Yeah, my thoughts are that like 320 is probably a good level to and and for me personally, this one's too pricey for me to to be trading. I'm kind of lame. But um looking at the chart, 320 seems like it's a level to be establishing a position and then see how it respects 309 basically. That is the 786 Got a nice volume shelf here, corresponding to this consolidation over here. I would think that would be an excellent dip buying opportunity because look at the RSI. It's at 18.51. It's pretty low. But also, though, you know, word of caution, I guess, if we are, you know, seeing or starting to see or, or going to start to see like delinquent credit card payments, uh, just a lot of debt, people start starting to like tightening their budgets and stuff. Are people really going to be buying? Like, I've never bought like anything from Lululemon. It always struck me as like, you know, a uh, very expensive place to buy yoga pants. And I know that they've got more than yoga pants because when I made the thumbnail for the video last week, I saw that they have like, you know, men's clothing, jeans, whatever, all sorts of things. But yeah, it just strikes me as overpriced. And so if we are in a recession, if I am noticing inflation. If I am noticing that when I go out to buy a drink, it is more expensive than it used to be and I can't afford it anymore. Am I going to be buying expensive yoga pants? The answer is no. And so I could definitely see this going lower. And and so I would think that this is a potentially good dip buying opportunity. But if what's going on in like the economy in people's wallets is suggesting, you know, like that maybe this is not going to be a good position to be holding. Um, yeah. So, so, I mean, I'm, I'm cautious of it, but, um, maybe, I mean, like here you saw this, the RSI here on June 1st of 2023 being at like 2281 current RSI is lower than that, but like, you know, what, what do we see here? 
So we saw this gap up and there's some volume there. And yeah, I mean, what's it tell? The earnings was the tell there. And I think they just did report earnings recently, didn't they? Yeah, um, over here. Yeah, and then it gapped down. So yeah, I I wait for it to continue cooling off. I think it will continue to cool off. Um, I just don't see. Yeah, I mean, even like you know this this bottom here that it bounced. That's still lower than current price. That's around three twenty seven. I think it's got lower to go. Um, and but with that though, you know maybe if it does come down to like the seven eight six going up to those previous all time highs. That's a 66% swing or, you know, profit, whatever. But yeah, I, I, I'd be cautious with it. But those are my thoughts. I could be wrong. might very well be wrong. And so, yeah, I'll take this one off and then I'll start going over some of these. I think I had mentioned, yeah, nine energy. I'll go over that. Ooh, and I, uh, imp imperial yeah imperial i don't know why i have a hard time pronouncing that word imperial i think i just think of like an an imp i think of like final fantasy <laughs> i'm gonna delete that Ooh, actually i probably shouldn't have deleted that because i like to add them to my uh oops not uno imp okay so that is added to a dgen ed list all right so yeah I am now going to go over nine energy services, which is ticker symbol N I N E, which closed on Friday, April 12th at a price of $2 and 82 cents being down just 1% on the day, but looking like, you know, maybe putting in some topping signals here, big wicks to the upside. Got a couple of them there, a couple small wicks. And uh, it does look like Thursday was a bearish engulfing candle from the prior two days. So, you know, really just like the open of, Thursday was higher than the closes of both of the previous days and the close from Thursday was lower than the opens of both of the previous days. So it doesn't look so good there to get this wick up. Seems to me like that's some like exit maneuvering. Uh, but at the same time, you know, this is an up move followed by consolidation. So maybe it's a bull flag, but with these wicks to the upside like that, like that's a pretty big wick. Uh, going from, let's see, the open was like 297. That's it's almost a 30 cent, 10%, uh, you know, wick up there. So, I mean, this, this I, like to me looks a little precarious, but it could also be a bull flag. I'm not sure. Let's see. Ooh, what could be actually no? I mean the head. If this was, I was thinking maybe this is the left shoulder. This is the head, but that left shoulder is taller than that head, so that doesn't make any sense. I'm not sure if there is a pattern here. There's this gap here. I could actually see. I wonder if this would make a move up to fill this gap. But then I'd imagine there'd be a good amount of resistance there. So let's see the low on November sixth was $3.41, so I'm just gonna mark that up here. And I'm gonna make that gap thicker and bluer. All right, and so, you know, I could see $3.41. I mean, actually, with it being down so much, how much how much of a move is it to the upside there? It's like 20% 20, 20 move. I feel like that might be, you know, like a, carrot in front of the donkey or whatever and the donkey's not smart enough to get the carrot and that might just be kind of a tease and yeah let's see maybe there's a trend line here corresponding with that probably not this is all probably going to be a stretch but we'll see what I can try to put together I mean I think it actually looks pretty intriguing because you did see this. I could see a retrace to this line. So this is, as you can see, this is a pretty rough line. It just threw this up here, connecting the dots, nothing too fancy about it. So I was basically basically just thinking, well, I see this little bit of consolidation there. I wonder if there's a trend line. 
that would suggest there's some support there. And maybe that trend line would suggest there's some support under where it's currently at. This trend line's too steep, but you know, we can look at that and see, you know, did act as support here, you know, really just being approximate, broke below it, hung out above that level for the most part here, acting as support, broke below it again here, hanging out below it now, it acting as resistance, and then a break above. So I could definitely see a retrace to the scene of the crime, which would be coming down to this downtrend. Again, approximately drawn. And I do think that could coincide with earnings coming up on May 7th less than a month away. I think that price could, you know, maybe fade here a little bit, uh, maybe come down and then consolidate. That would be a bear flag. Well, you do have this big move up showing a lot of weakness here. And that could get people thinking, hey, look, there's a big up move and there's consolidation. That's a bull flag. It's going higher. But in reality, you're actually seeing a lot of rejections above $3 a share, that being a psychological level, not only is it a whole number, it's an odd number. You want to stay away from those. Uh, so, yeah, um, it's not It's not a, uh, I don't know, is that a round number? Three, three is not a round number. That's an odd number. So you want to stay away from that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so I could see this kind of like fading, pulling back a little bit and then consolidating. And so it actually like, I mean, relative to the lows here, yeah, it moved up and consolidated. Um, but if that's following a down move from that high, it's still up from the lows, but following a down move and consolidation, that could be bearish consolidation leading up to earnings. I could see it drop down to this downtrend and two dollars a share. That to me, yeah, that that would correspond with multiple factors here. Let's see, I could draw. I don't need, like. Uh, Uptrend, man, what's going on? I want the, the ray tool, come on. All right. So yeah, I mean there, this is, you know, again, sloppy. This is a rough, rough line. But yeah, I mean, I could see, actually, yeah, I wonder, you know, if it would pull back before earnings. Yeah, maybe, it could, maybe what could happen is it pulls back. Find support here, then consolidates, makes a bear flag. It's to be kind of a short flag, and then drops more during earnings. Or, you know, after it's dropped, maybe it seems like it's holding that support and it would go higher. But if it is a down move and then consolidation, that would be a bear flag. But yeah, this is a pretty interesting stock. Somebody in the comments requested it. I think it's a pretty cool one. Um, but yeah, I... I mean, for me, if I was looking to enter this, I would say, look, I missed it. I'm going to wait for a retest, a retrace to the scene of the crime, and then reevaluate. If that's around earnings, you know, that's getting a little risky because you never know what's going to happen with earnings. But, you know, let's see, the 52-week low is $1.78.5. That was hit over here on November 22nd. So, yeah, I mean, if it's trading around, well, like, yeah, I mean, Earnings here it didn't really do too much, but yeah, I mean, following earning the last earnings, it went up a good amount. I could see it coming down. I'd be cautious with it. Yeah, my Kiko, no problem. And so yeah, there is nine energy, and then I will just you know, so I've been streaming for about an hour now. I'm happy to continue taking more requests, but I am gonna try to make progress with these tickers that are listed up here. Just gonna make sure they are on my. Yeah, some of them I took off my DGN. I didn't add to my DGN Ed watch list. But yeah, I'll do uh, now uh, Hub Cybersecurity uh, Israel, which is ticker symbol HUBC. This is an Isra Israel Israeli based uh, Israel Israel based company specializing in cybersecurity solutions to protect commercial and government information. And so yeah, I mean I feel like. With, with there being conflict over there right now, um, maybe this is a good investment, but I don't know enough about that. And I, I mean, one of the things that makes me sick about stock market or commodities is trading around horrible things happening around the world um, <clears throat> or, you know, making money when things like that happen. Um, but yeah, so cybersecurity has moved up. I mean, this move up here in the RSI, but then a pullback and consolidation. So maybe that's not so good. Uh, we do see 
Lower highs here, lower highs in the RSI. $1.30. This was a reverse split, a 1 for 10 reverse split. Yeah, I mean, I like I would think really uh with with the conflicts going on and stuff right now, I would think investing in Israel-based companies might be kind of risky. You know, it's like um investing in Chinese-based companies when there's you know always talk of Taiwan and you know stuff like that. Uh so there's just like a lot of tension there. And so this seems to me like it's probably fairly risky, especially having moved up over 11% on Friday. Um, yeah, I mean, and this too, I mean, this just looking at the chart here, thinking about it. So we got this low here. I'll draw Fibonacci in a second, uh, but I just kind of want to think about this first before I draw it. I imagine this is the 786, that this pulled back to the 786. And so that's my guess. And maybe this wicked up to the 236, maybe the 382, but we'll uh, probably both of them. Um, but so what I see here is this big move up, and this, you know, is not really a topping signal necessarily because you got to close about right in the middle, more or less shows indec indecision. But after this big move up, there are no buyers up here. You get a pullback, a cool off, a bullish engulfing candle here, looking pretty good, going up over 33% on, I believe, Wednesday, April 10th, continuing higher, stair-stepping up here, but on red candle days, so opening higher, closing lower, you get another big wick closing the week. And the thing that you know strikes me about this one, so this year, you had a close near the middle of trading. And so that doesn't make me think this is a topping signal necessarily. Just that there aren't buyers up here, it needs to cool off before a retest. We got that. This one suggests to me that is a topping signal. A number of factors there. One being a big wick to the top. Another one being a close in the bottom half and even, I believe, the bottom quarter of that trading. So that does not look too good. Also, we could not get closes above for any of these highs here. The only one that we got to close above was this one here, and that's you know pretty obvious. And uh, all of these other days had trading higher than that close. I mean, if we could have gotten a close above Thursday's high, which was $1.32, so just two cents higher, really getting three cents higher, so you get a clear close above it, uh, we couldn't get that. And you know, so now it's just like you got all these wicks up here, all these tops. There just aren't buyers up there. And so I would think that this is probably coming down. I would think this is risky and not worth it. Uh, but if I do a Fibonacci retracement from the low here of 68 cents going up to the high of $1.89, got that drawn exactly. Let's see. This did bounce from the 786. I was right about that. And now let's look at the... 236 and the 382. I was right about both of those. Wicked above them, but closed below. Awesome. Let's see. I might as well add the... I, I think, yeah, I can add the 50%. I like kind of customize that one. It closed above the 50% retracement. That is at a price of $1.28.5. I would look for it to hold above that level. Um, but I think that, you know, it's kind of like... What's happening here is it's like attempting to stair step higher, uh, but it's getting squashed as it goes higher. So, you know, moves up here, pulls back to the 786, attempts to go up to the 236, but then pulls back to the 50%. And so now it's kind of like sandwiched between the 50% and the 382. So it doesn't have much room to go higher. And so I would think that this is probably going to fail to get above the 382. So really, yeah, screw the 50% level at $1.28.5. I don't think that one's too important because that could just be, you know, uh, like it's not telling you anything. It's already at that price. It closed above it. What we need to see is not wicks above, but a close above the 382, which is at a price of $1.42 or, you know, rounding $1.43. Need to get a close above that for it to continue higher. Uh, and so, you know, in all honesty, I just don't see that happening. I feel like this is probably 
going to be going lower. I think it's riskier. Like the risk is greater than the reward, but that's just me. Um, but you know, even if the reward was greater than the risk, maybe I'd be intrigued by it. And also thinking about this, it did go up 10% in the after hours on Friday. So maybe I should look at this on the four hour time scale. And so, yeah, I mean, but still look, what was, yeah, a dollar 43. So it's like, that's the 382. So it's like, I mean, I don't know. I just, I just read the numbers that are on the screen, you know, and it says a dollar 42.8. I would think it's $1.43 and it didn't close above that level. It wicked above it, got rejected and closed at that level. So I think that's acting as resistance. And I, I think that this is, maybe I'm wrong, but this just seems too risky to me. So hopefully that's helpful. Oh, wait, uh, Big Mo, check my question above. Oh yeah, sorry, I just... Yeah, I, I can see your comments. So, yeah, I saw your comment. Uh, tech is amazing. So you're talking about Biora. Oh, okay. And then so thoughts on holding uh, uh, Polestar long term. Hopefully I addressed that before. Let me know if I didn't. Uh, so my, okay, yeah, I missed your comment. Sorry. Yeah, I just, I missed it. I overlooked it. Uh, my buddy said he makes guaranteed money doing options on AT&T because the price doesn't move much. Could you explain that? So yeah, um, I could definitely look at that. That's that's actually an interesting one. So like for me, whenever I like I I recently sold or bought a put on Tilray because I thought it was going down following earnings, and you know I'm not like that was just like I think that's what's going to happen. I'm not like bearish on cannabis or Tilray. I'm actually really excited about them. But I just I play with uh, you know go with my my uh, have some conviction in my analysis. I made seven dollars doing that. Uh, but then I, you know, pretty much like whenever I make money buying calls or buying puts, I'll make a little bit of money and then I'll keep doing it and then I'll lose money and then I lose more money than I make. The only way that I make money with options is by selling covered calls. And so maybe that's what your buddy's talking about uh, with TNT. And so before I go over there, I'm just going to add this one to DJ and Ed and I will add, I believe they're just T, is that right? Yeah, at and And so... I'll look at AT&T. And so, yeah, let's see the stock price. See, I mean, it's just been going up a little bit. And so, hmm, where could this be finding support? I think that's a good thing to add. So I'll, I'll just do like a little bit of TA to kind of give us some ideas of like levels. And then I'll look at the options chain. And so I imagine your buddy's selling covered calls. Dude, sorry, big one. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't see your comments. It might have just been me. I might have just overlooked them. But thank you for uh, being persistent. And so, yeah, I'm just going to do, let's see, Fibonacci retracement from here up to here. And so, like, I think it's breaking this level. But maybe, actually, I'm just going to, I'm going to do this to the penny because I think it is potentially important. No, actually it looks like it's between a couple levels, but I'll still just do it to the penny anyways. Seven, six. Uh, yeah, so I mean, maybe, maybe there's a, let's look at the volume profile. Yeah, I mean, I could see this coming down to the 382 at 15, 90. And so I'm just going to, oops, uh, remove the volume profile. And so let's say, let's say I have a hundred shares at 1590. And this is actually pretty reasonably priced. I would have expected AT&T to be uh, pricier. But so let's say I have a hundred shares with an average price of $16. Um, I can look over at the options chain here. This gives all the options. And so calls, I'm looking at calls here. Hopefully, I know it's pretty small. Hopefully it's big enough for you guys to see. But so looking at calls only for the strike uh, that expires on, or the contracts that expire on April 19th. Currently, you know, we're in the money, you know, we're above our, our price. But so like, let's say I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling a little, uh, sorry, I'm stuttering. 
I'm feeling a little anxious. And I think that AT&T is going to be going lower than $16 a share. <clears throat> but I think it might take a couple months to do that. And so right here uh, on the options table, uh, you can see $16.50. So current price is above that. Or actually, yeah, let's say, uh, I guess you could do this a couple different ways. So current price is below $16.50. I could sell a covered call. So that's basically loaning out my 100 shares. I get 12 cents per share. That's $12 for loaning out those shares over for the over the course of the week. And then if it closes on Friday, April 19th above 1650 above the strike, I have to sell my shares at 1650. Doesn't matter what the price is, if it's above 1650, it could be 20. I got to sell my shares or I basically I've the contract is that I get rid of my shares, I I sell them at the price of 1650 even if it's $20, even if it's 25, doesn't matter. But if it's lower than $16.50, if it's $16.49, I get those shares back. And then I can repeat that process. But let's say, you know, my average is $16. And I'm like, I just kind of want to get rid of the shares. I'm happy to break even with them. And so I could sell a covered call with a strike of $16. If it closes above $16 on Friday next week, that is... Uh, you know, that would mean that I would then have to sell my share. So let's say it stays flat over the course of the next week. It closes next week at 1631. That would mean from my 100 shares that I got for $16 each. So that's $160. Uh, is that right? hundred. No, that's, uh, let's see hundred shares. So that's, uh, $1,600. Uh, Yeah. And so those shares at current price are worth $1,631. But I could sell a covered call with a strike of $16 for $40. And so right there, you know, with given the current price, if it does close at 16 or above next Friday, I'd make $40 selling that contract and then I'd sell my shares at break even. So I'd net make $40. Whereas if I were to sell the shares now, I'd be making 31. So that's one way to do it. And I do that a lot with stocks that I own more than 100 shares of. By or I was talking about, I definitely do it with them. And you could do this further out into the future. Like let's say if you wanted to go, um, let's say my average is $16. And I think that price will be at or above $16 or I think price will actually be lower than $16. So selling a call, that's actually bearish. You're saying that I think it's going to be lower than that price. And so let's say I think it's going to be lower than $16, which is currently in the money right now, by the end of May. I could then sell those 16 shares or, or, or loan them out, get $80 for them. And then uh, um, if it closes above $16 on May 31st, I got to sell them. If it closes below, I get my shares back and I can sell another covered call. So that's a way to do them. I do this typically on a weekly basis uh, and I do it with uh, like GameStop's been really profitable for me selling covered calls. Uh, and then um, also, uh, let's see, I um, have also been doing it with AMC, but those are usually not, I don't usually make much money with them. And then also Biora and uh, ChargePoint and Luminar. And the best one, the best performer has probably been, <clears throat> excuse me, um, GameStop. So ho hopefully that helps you, uh, that addresses your question, Big Mo. Uh, sorry, and I, again, I apologize for not seeing your questions. <clears throat> yeah, I, they weren't popping up for some reason. Yeah, because I had, I had been following them and I, I would have, yeah, I mean, I definitely would have noticed yours. So sorry about that. Is that what you were thinking though? Covered calls? <clears throat> Cause like for me, I'm, I just don't pay attention enough to the markets. Like I, if I was, you know, trading in front of the computer every day, I'd be better at buying and selling, uh, or I guess really just trading 
uh, calls and puts, but I, I'm just, I'm not paying attention to the market close enough to be able to do that. And I don't usually <clears throat> establish positions at the right prices and then they end up expiring worthless. Uh, but selling covered calls, always make money with those. But yeah, this is actually a pretty cool chart with earnings coming up. I am going to, I'm actually, I'm going to leave them on the request list because I might want to come back to this. But yeah, and then I will also go over ParaZero Technologies and then Supercom. And then I'll probably close on those unless there are more requests. But yeah, this is another Israeli-based aerospace company. So yeah, dollar dollar share. Sweet, yeah. Covered calls are great. Like I, I have though, like I did end up like selling covered calls with AMC, I was like, my average was up here. I was selling them with strikes down here just because like the price wasn't going anywhere. It's like, at least I'm making a little bit of money holding the bag on my AMC position. And then, you know, for whatever reason, there was some volatility. It spiked up, closed above my uh, strike on that Friday, but below my average. And so I had to sell a hundred shares, which wasn't my full position, but it's just like annoying uh, to have to do that. But that's kind of like how they become risky is if your strike price is lower than either your average or below a price you want to sell at. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've made like buying and selling stocks. I don't really make that much money. Uh, buying and holding stocks, potentially I'll make some money. On those positions that I'm, holding the bag on and I make money selling covered calls, no question. So I think that's just a really, really great way to make some money on holding the bag. If it's if it's a company you believe in uh, or, you know, one that you have a good price at, that's I think it's great. But yeah, I'm going to get into Para, Para Zero Technologies, ticker symbol PRZO, which is an Israeli-based, uh, an Israel-based aerospace company. And... Looking at the chart here, trading at around $1.08, being up 38% on Friday, being down just a little bit in the after hours. And let's see, what do I see with the chart here? Um, I think this is probably pretty risky. I think any, uh, yeah, any companies based in countries that are currently experiencing a lot of conflict, you know, I think that they're probably going to be pretty risky. And with this chart, there's not too much history with it. So that makes it a little concerning. Just, you know, there's not as many lines to draw. It does look like, though, that it might have come to resistance over here as this was support in the past. Got a lot of consolidation there. And this actually, I think this is a nice example of, you know, down move consolidation. That's a bear flag and a break lower. Although, you know, just holding it throughout this, you would have made money if you sold up here. So I do think that's pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, this consolidation here, looking at the floor there, around $1.12. Current price is below that. I do think it hit resistance. We do have, let's see, uh, stock price here. Um, let's see. this. If this is anything, it might be hidden bearish divergence. So we have a lower high in the stock price right there. Let's look at this RSI. If the RSI goes higher than the RSI that was hit here on December 21st, which was 75.58, currently at 74.67. If that goes, you know, one point higher, the RSI goes to like 76 and price is not above the high that was hit on the 21st, which was, I'm not, dang it, I gotta add those numbers up there. The high was $1.87. If the price is still lower here and that RSI is higher, that's hidden bearish divergence. And so I, and I think it's kind of getting into that territory and you just think about it, forget about whether it's higher or lower, just think about it relatively. You know, over here, 
the RSI is roughly flat. It's roughly come back to the same level. Over here, price is way lower. So, yeah, I mean, this is saying that, you know, it's getting above 70. That's saying that it's overbought. But price is way lower than it was here. So it's um, from the high here to the low there. It's 40% discount, you could think of it as. But there's not enough strength to push it back up to that level. So, you know, I think it's... I think it's probably reached a top and I think it could be pulling back pretty soon. If RSI goes higher, this could definitely continue higher. But if it doesn't get higher than $1.87 in the price, that's going to be a hidden, bullish diverge, a hidden bearish divergence. And uh, yeah, so I think it looks pretty risky, especially, I mean, we just take a measurement from the bottom up to the top. It's a 100% move over the past like week, a little over a week. So... I think if you're up in it, might be a good time to take profits or, or start trimming heavily. Uh, if you're thinking about getting into it because it has run 100%, I think you're chasing and I think you might be uh, holding the bag in the end. But yeah, I mean, and also, I mean, just look at this lower highs. It's just getting weaker and weaker. So, and it's also right around dollar. What's it trade on, on the NASDAQ? It needs to hold above a dollar. And yeah, I mean, just look at what happened with Biora. It was above a dollar for a little bit. Now it's lower. Uh, Nikola was above a dollar. Now it's lower. Reclaimed a dollar. Now it's lower. This one right now reclaiming a dollar. In two weeks, it'll be below a dollar. Maybe I'm right about that. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But um, yeah, so those are my thoughts on PRZO. Try to be good. Add it to the DGN Ed list, which has 199 tickers on it, which means I've I've gone over over probably over 199 tickers. And so now I will go over Supercom, which recently had earnings apparently on March 12th. I don't know why that's got the earnings marker here. I guess it's got another earnings coming up on the 15th, so tomorrow. And so my thoughts with this, um, let's see. I feel like you could probably guess what my thoughts are from, I won't even do from the low, I'll just do from like the approximate bottom here up to here, up 73%, the high 89 up to the high here, over 100%. It is up a lot before earnings. What do I think is going to happen following earnings? I think it's going to go down. So yeah, even, you know, oh, it's only 27, 28 cents a share. That's cheap, but it's up almost 18% on the day Friday. And, you know, also, it's got this big wick up to contend with, you know, all, like, because basically, I mean, what you got here, think about it, not from like the candle or wick perspective, but think about it as the guy who bought up here at 35, 50, 34, 50, maybe he bought a little bit, he or she bought a little bit more down here and his average is right here now at 33 42. You know, if you see that retrace from that level, so right around 33.50, let's say, coming down to the bottom here, you just lost almost half of your position in a matter of days. And so I would be sweating a little bit. And then seeing it come up here, it's like, oh man, 10%. I'm only down 10%. I, I should have sold because now now I'm down almost 20%. And so this person's thinking, you know, I this person was thinking he's buying momentum, buying, you know, something that's going to be taking him to the moon. And then it doesn't. And so that person is going to want to sell if price gets up there. And so that's what this entire wick is up here. This is just a bunch of bag holders. You know, not all bag holders. Some people bought down here and just held through that. But the fact that the price went up this high means there were buyers and sellers up here. And those buyers are just, you know, feeling stupid. And, you know, when was the last time price was up that high? You know, over here. Or, you know, it's people that bought over here. People that bought the floor here. You know, they're thinking... Yeah, this is, I think, a really nice exploration of psychology 
so let's say, you know, somebody like, hey, my buddy was telling me about the stock SPCB on November 10th, telling me I should buy in. Man, I don't know. I'm going to sit on the sidelines. I'll see what happens. And then I see it go up 85% a couple days later. But dang it, man. I missed that. I wanted to be in on that. Oh, now it's back at my level. I'm going to add in here. Price goes up. Oh, man, this is it. This is it. It's going higher. Nope, nope. Pulls back. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going to add more to my position, and this is going to get me in. 85% swing. Goes up. Let's see what this swing is here. This is 20%. And then the guy's like, no, no, it's going to 85%. Pulls back. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. You know, back at my level. It's all right, though. It's going to hold. It's going to take me to the moon. Then he gets a 17% candle right here, closing at the top of it. This is it. This is taking me to 85% move. And then it starts to fade, and then it breaks down. And so this person who bought here because his buddy was talking about it over here, and he missed out on this run-up, has been holding the bag for, let's see, because he bought after that run-up. So he bought over here. And so he bought about a year and a half ago or 135 days ago, so 90, 92 trading days, 90 trading days, let's say. Um, and it comes back to his level, almost comes back to his level. You know, this guy wants to offload shares. And so I think there's going to be a lot of resistance there. And if we look at the volume profile, we actually see, I mean, there's just been so much consolidation down here that that's kind of getting in the way of it. But if I slide this over, so we're ignoring that. Yeah, all of this consolidation here. So I think this one looks like uh, bad news. Bad news bears. So yeah, but those are my thoughts on that. And I will do any other requests if you guys got them, but I'm probably gonna be signing off because it's been a long day, and I've got to uh, do some, uh, let's see, uh, bookkeeping, I guess, before market opens, because I want to figure out, and I actually could do this, hey, Big Mo, I don't know if you're still here, I could actually go over what I do with covered calls. Uh, basically, I, I like to look at the uh, max pain. If you're still here, I can go over it with you. Um, and so, let's see, I can see, basically, I, I have, I say basically too many times. Um, and I say, um, too much as well, but let's see. So covered calls that I could. So, yeah, I mean, this is like research for me. So I might just do this. If you guys are curious, I'm just going to look up the max pains for AMC, GameStop, ChargePoint, and Luminar because I hold those and I could actually, yeah, here, let's see. What is over here? Ooh, natural gas. I didn't even talk about natural gas. I This is the first time I have not made. So what determines the strike that I pick? So that is either going to be based on my average or based on what max pain is. And so I don't know if this is the best way to find max pain. I don't know how credible it is, but I go to maximum-pain.com slash options. And then its default is the SPX, uh, but you could just change that up here or you could just change it down here. And so I'll start with AMC. And so this max pain, I'm pretty sure is 350 because I've looked it up a number of times. So, so this is for the expiration of April 19th. And so if I scroll down here, yeah, it's 350. And so my average is well above 350. But to be honest, I'm tired of the lack of upside moves with AMC. And so for me, I guess really just for my own entertainment, I'm curious or I'm interested to just kind of spice things up because most of the covered calls that I can sell with AMC, like I make a dollar on them. It's pretty pathetic or they don't even get filled. And like if AMC were to close above 350 and I had to sell 100 shares because it closed in the money. It's like I'd be unhappy about that because I'd be offloading shares, but big picture, I'd be stoked that AMC is going higher. So that's kind of like my philosophy with that. And so we'll just look at the um, 
options table for AMC. And you know, I'm not trying to push AMC or anything. I'll also do this with GameStop, which is probably more interesting. And then I'll also do it with uh, Luminar and ChargePoint. I could also do this with another another ticker if you guys uh, have one that you want me to look at. But these are these are the ones that I typically I have more than 100 shares on, and they do have weekly contracts. So I pretty much sell weekly covered calls, which might be like like with AMC, maybe I make like two or three dollars this week selling covered calls. But if as long as I get those shares back, no big deal. And then, you know, I just stack those gains and they, it doesn't seem like a lot, but if you sell like tens of covered calls, you can make a decent amount of money every single week doing this. And so it's looking at AMC here, not, not thinking about the chart. Well, actually maybe thinking about the chart. I think 265 is a pretty significant level. And with max pain being 350, that's getting back up to this level, you know, right around here. So there could be some green moves uh, for the week, but it also could just continue bleeding. But anyways, not trying to push it or anything. But so like looking at the options table for April 9th. Uh, so the way that I would do this is, okay, max pain is 350. And uh, as we can see here, and current price is 265. So, you know, it's well below that strike. So I feel like that's pretty safe. But if we look at the options table, all of these strikes have the same bid price, which is what you get for selling a covered call. And so for me, let's say I have, uh, let's see, I usually do this in like a spreadsheet and stuff, but I'll just kind of do like a preview or like a, go over it here. So basically I have one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have, I guess that doesn't make, that seems like too many. Four, five, six, seven. I didn't realize I had this many shares. Um, okay, yeah, so I have, I guess 800 shares, seven or 800 shares of AMC that I could sell a covered call on expiring on April 19th up here, the strike price up here, or the, the strike date, the expiration date up there. And so because all of these are $1, you know, when you multiply this by 100 and the max pain's 350, I'd feel safe selling them at 550 at a strike price of 550. I don't want to sell my shares at that, but I'd risk that because max pain's all the way down here and price is well below that. And so what I'd probably do is sell majority of them at 550 and I might leave a couple contracts at like six or 650 just in case maybe there's a squeeze and it goes above 550. I wouldn't want to have to get rid of my sh all of my shares at 550. So I kind of like spread them out. But yeah, so that's what I'll be doing. I'll probably be doing with AMC. And then I'll also look at GameStop's been more interesting because it's had more volatility. And I'm, I'm just going to create new tabs because I'm going to refer to these um, when I do my little bookkeeping for the week. Usually I do it either Friday evenings or Saturday mornings, but I've had to work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday 12 hours each day. So I've just been pretty spread too thin. I'm pretty behind on stuff. That's why I didn't put out many videos this weekend. But I should be able to put out a good amount tomorrow and uh, probably even more on Tuesday. I'm going to do a little bit of stuff outside because it's so nice out. But yeah, so anyways, game stock uh, for the expiration of April 19th. So this coming Friday, we can see that the max pain is $13 a share. And current price for GameStop is below $13 a share. And my average, I believe, is around $20.50. And so... Oh, sorry about if you heard a bonk. Um, and so for me, I don't want to be selling GameStop any lower than my average. And I think that I will definitely be able to sell it at or above my average at some point. I'm not too concerned about that. But let's see. And just like looking at the chart. Yeah, I mean, it was trading much higher. So around this time, it was really nice. Like I'd be making 50 bucks a contract or 20 to 50 bucks, depending on, you know, what the strike was. But now following earnings, 
it's not as exciting because price is so much lower and it's also flattened out. It's not volatile. So it, like the contracts are just a lot cheaper now. So you make less selling a covered call. But, you know, using that information about the max pain being $13. And I should note, I guess, so max pain is basically like um, that is the strike price that let's say I'm a market maker and you want to buy a covered call from me. So I sell you a covered call. If it expires in the money, I then have to provide you those shares. But if it expires out of the money, I get to keep that premium on the contract, which is the uh, bid price that's listed over here. I get to keep that money and you can't buy those shares at that strike, a hundred of them. And so the maximum amount of pain means the maximum amount of, uh, of call options and puts expiring out of the money. So market makers make the most money while having to provide, not provide many shares. You know, if they're all closing in the money, they got to provide a lot of shares. That's how you get gamma squeezes. And so Max Payne is kind of a guide for, that I like to use, Price is probably going to close on Friday around that. It will change over the course of the week. Every single day, this will be updated. Uh, but so just keeping an eye on like $13, I could get $5 a share for that. Or sorry, not $5 a share, $5 per contract. I think I have a few of them. And so, you know, I could do that. But my average is, you know, around, you know, really selling uh, the 21 strike. That would be secure for me. I'd be safe with that. But, you know, I, I just don't feel like it's too likely that it'd be closing much higher than Max Payne. And so looking at this, I could see, you know, you got these like $5, $5 for contracts, $4, and you got these three kind of dwindling. And so I think I've already looked at it. I'm intrigued by the $16 strike price because I get $3 per contract. And that's like the highest strike for $3. And so, you know, I could sell three of those. I make nine bucks. It's not that crazy, but I'd feel comfortable with that. And um, and then, you know, watching the market when it opens to make sure that they get filled. Um, but also, I mean, these, these bid prices could go up. I just don't pay attention to the market close enough to really be able to pick that out. But yeah, anyways, that's... Um, that's, that's what I would do. That's what I'm probably doing for GameStop. And then ChargePoint, I can look at that. Uh, so that is, you know, it's probably not as interesting because it's close to a dollar. Whenever a stock gets close to or below a dollar, the options change. It gets really boring. And so I'm just going to open up another tab here. I'll do charge point. And so looking at that strike on, uh, let's see, uh, April 19th again, that is going to be $2.00. And so that is currently higher than the current price, currently higher than the current price, believe it or not. And so what I see here, actually, we have lower lows in the stock price and higher lows in the RSI. That's actually pretty interesting uh, that that is, um, that's bullish divergence. And so, but you know, this could continue to go lower. The RSI and the price could continue to go lower. You got to see kind of like the bottoming signal, but that could surprise us. And so with this, with a strike or the uh, max pain of $2, I could see this going up. My average for charge point, I think it's probably around 250. Let me see. Um, yeah, I've been selling covered calls at 250. So I think my average is a little lower than 250. And so if we look over at the options table for charge point for this week, yeah, it's really not that interesting because it's all just zeros here. So what I would probably do in this case, I'd look for the following week. So April 26th, $2, man, that sucks just $1. You make $1 per contract. So it's not really that exciting. So for something like this, I probably just set limit orders and just maybe they get filled, maybe they don't. Uh, maybe May is intriguing. No, I mean, 250 though, it's still nothing. And so max pain for this coming week is 250 and you can adjust the expiration dates up here. It loads super fast, $2 again. And next week is the monthly. Uh, contract expiration. So there's probably going to be some volatility around that. And this goes down to 150. So charge point is not looking too good as far as strikes go. So that kind of sucks. 
And then Luminar also, you know, this one's going to be total crap. My average for this one, I haven't been aggressive in buying it, but I think my average is like $3 or something. I don't know. It's, it's higher. I know it could be much higher, so I can't, I can't complain too much. But yeah, I'll just look up the max pain for Luminar. Oops, not AMC. L-A-Z-R. And so coming up for the 19th, it's probably like two bucks. So that's suggesting you go higher. Look at the options chain, $2. Can't make any money with that, but it is encouraging that 150 is three cents. So maybe $2 would get bumped to uh, one penny. Um, but that is considering, you know, that is the max pain and my average is higher than that. I probably wouldn't want to sell a covered call at a strike of $2 if that's what the max pain is because then I'd be selling my shares uh, lower than my average and I don't want to do that. I, like I want to hold Luminar long term. Um, but if there is some volatility, I mean, it does seem like it's potentially respecting this level. Maybe it'd be retracing to this purple downtrend. And so then, you know, maybe sell some covered calls off of that. But yeah, I mean, that's basically my strategy with covered calls. Uh, and I, I tend to organize all of my trades in an Excel spreadsheet, uh, which I do either on Friday evenings or Saturday mornings. <laughs> I update it, uh, you know, to get prepared for the following week, looking at max pains, seeing which contracts have expired, which ones I can, uh, you know, then sell for the following week. But yeah, Big Mo, I don't know if you're, I see that there's one person here, so I don't know if it's still you, uh, but you know, since I have gone over all of that and I've been doing this for an hour and 45 minutes, I am probably going to be signing off. And so with that being said, thank you all so much for hanging out. It's been great doing this. Make sure you like the video. Always share your thoughts, whether in the comments down below after the fact or in the live chat. Always happy to be taking requests live and prior to the streams. And of course, make sure you subscribe. I do live streams every Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern, taking ticker requests live. And I tend to do an additional stream during the week, really just depending on my schedule or, you know, depending on what earnings calls are going on. And this week I did put out a post on the channel. I could actually pull it up. Let's see, I'm just gonna go to the channel over here and we can see the community tab here. And I did put out this, you know, from Earnings Whispers. If you want me to cover any of these, the only days I'm working next week are Wednesday and Thursday, so I cannot cover any of those. But if you want me to cover any of these other uh, earnings calls, I could do that. Uh, but, you know, I also, uh, earnings calls can take a lot of effort. And so I do feel like we're just starting to get into earnings season again. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to streaming a bunch of earnings calls uh, it's a nice way to bring people into the channel, learn about companies, and uh, yeah, uh, just make the stocks, make the companies more accessible to people, and um, yeah, just engage with people about them. It's fun. But, you know, uh, those are my thoughts. If you found them helpful, make sure you like the video, share your thoughts in the comments down below, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I am signing off. I just threw up the uh, subscribe thing earlier, so I'm not going to do it again. Uh, but yeah, I am signing off. I hope you guys have a great start to your week. I hope you had a great weekend. My weekend's really just starting, so I'm excited about that. Have the next two days off before I go back to work Wednesday and Thursday next week. And that's my work week, so that's pretty nice. But they're 12-hour shifts, so it kind of sucks. Uh, but anyways, I'm looking forward to the start of the uh, trading tomorrow. See how things go around the you know world events that have occurred over the weekend. See how the markets respond. And also, you know, with uh, crypto, and actually before I close this, I'm actually going to pull up, I'm curious for myself. Bitcoin is back up. Yeah, dude, I, um, yeah, dude, I don't know, I said, dude, four hours. Um, yeah, I, I bought a little bit down here. I bought a little bit of Doge down here as well. And Ethereum Classic and Litecoin and Shiba. So, yeah, I, I have been learning that when, when there's fear of it going lower, it's probably not. Add a little bit. And if it continues lower, wait a day. Buy more then. And so, yeah. Um, have, a nice, have a nice rest of your night. Have a great week. And I'll be putting out some more videos tomorrow. Probably taking some clips from this, putting them out. So, uh, yeah, thanks for the requests. And I'll see you later. Happy trading. And...